take your blessing on our worship this morning. Pray your spirit may inspire us and draw us together and will enable us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Your honour and glory in the furtherance of your kingdom. Amen. Good morning. It's lovely to be with you again. Welcome to our service this morning, a service of morning prayer. You can see we're in a slightly different setting today, but hopefully won't make any other difference. Um, and uh, just to remind you that you can follow our service either via the Broad St. Clair Facebook um, page where you'll find the service there or in the green Church in Wales Gwedydd uh, Ddiol Daily Prayer Book which is also available online via the Church in Wales website and once again this service will be bilingual do please follow along and join in wherever you feel you can and we're going to start this morning's service then by singing the hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. <laughs>
So our service begins in daily prayer on pages 18 and 19. Grass a thang nebyd eich wi, oddi o ddiw ein tad ar arbrwydd Iesu Grist. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Daeth o'n ei hyd yn deulu dyw ym Mresanold heb ein tad, i roddi i ddolfolian ta diolch, i glywed a derbyn ei aer, i gyfloeno iddo anghenion yr holl byd, ac i geisio ei ras, fel y gallwn, troi ei fab Iesu Grist, ein rhoi ein hunain yw asanaeth. Jesus said, the first commandment is, listen Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Professor Unain Pechodai Uthatad, Achesio e Vadayant Aidang Nebid. Let us, after a moment of silence, confess our sins to the Father and seek his pardon and peace. So we say together, Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart, and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy forgive us. Help us to amend our lives, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Ba de di du hos a siog, si mada i baub si wire di velio, triga har o sich, a rid hai o bechod, e kaden hai meon dioni, a kadu in a bawi traguido, troi yesi gri stain har fluis. Amen. Turn now to, in daily prayer to pages twenty four and twenty five. Ad fluis agor ein gravisai. And genai a venega de voliant. Gogoniant ir tad a kir mag, a kir a spriglan. Velerois an edechrai, a my an hour, a kabith an wastad, an oisoi soiv. Amen. We keep a moment to reflect on the day ahead, dedicating it into the hands of Almighty God. Early in the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Yr oed yn llyfariaf yn halon, ac yn dweud ceisia fy wyneb. Am hynny ceisia dy wyneb o arglwydd. Crys triga ha. Crys triga ha. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our psalm for today is some verses from Psalm 85. It's verses 8 to 10. And you'll find Psalm 85 on pages 494 and 495 of Daily Prayer. And I'm going to say the psalm to, in English. I will listen to what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they turn not again to folly. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. 
truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give all that is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. First reading is taken from the first book of Kings. Adathleniad cantav, o lavir cantav a brenhinoid, brenhinoid, penod in deg now. Ano aithi ogov yaros, a daith gair ar gwyd ato gan ddweud. Beth a wneud i yma Elias? Dywedodd yn tai. Bim yn zelog iawn dros argwyd i'w alliod. Cefnodd yr Israeliad a dyfamod, a bwrw dallorau lawr, a lladd y broffoedi a'r clefu. Mae fi yn unig sydd ar ôl ac y maint yn ceisio feini oes unau. Yna dywedoedd wrtho, dos allan a saf ar y mynydd o flaen yr arglwydd. A dam yr arglwydd yn dod heidio, bi gwynt cryf nethol, yn rhoi go mynyddoedd a drillio creidiau o flaen yr arglwydd. Nid oedd yr arglwydd yn y gwynt. Ar ôl y gwynt, Bi daiar grin, nid oedd ag arglwydd yn y ddaiar grin. Ar ôl y ddaiar grin, bi'l tân, nid oedd yr arglwydd yn y tân. Ar ôl y tân, distawrwydd llethol. Pan glywodd Elias, lapiodd ei wyneb yn ei fanteth, a mynd i sefyd yn chenar ogof. A daith llais yn gofyn iddo. Beth a wneud i yma, Elias? A tebod yn tai. Bim yn zelog iawn dros yr arglwydd i'w alliod. Cefnodd yr Israeliad ar dy gefamod. A bwrw dallorau lawr. A lladd y broffoedi a clefu. Mae fi yn unig sydd ar ôl. Ac y maint yn ceisio feini oes unau. Dywedodd yr arglwydd wrtho, dos yn ôl i gyfeiriad anialwch Damascus, a phan gyrhaeddi yn ein i â Hazael yn frenin â Syria, a Jihu fab Nimsi yn frenin â Israel, ac Eliseus fab Safat o Abemechola yn brothoed yn dyle. Pwy banag fydd yn diank rhag clefydd Hazael, Bydd Jihu yn ei lladd. Pwy banag fydd yn diank rhag clefydd Jihu, bydd Eliseus yn ei lladd. Ond gadawaf yn wed ill yn Israel, y saith mil sydd heb blygu glyn i bal, na'i gysynu. Dyma'r ail yr arglwydd, diolch a bywyd hi. We'll now say together the words of the Gospel Canticle, the Wedum Gidangil, the Canticle or Evangel, a Benedictus, and you'll find the Benedictus on pages 28 and 29 of morning prayer, of daily prayer. Ben digedig vado argloi du Israel, amithom well di bobble thy prani rathid, codoth waridigaith gadani ni. Yn hi da fydd ei was. Fel y llefarodd trwy ennau a'i brythoed i sanctaidd, yn y rhoes oedd a fi. Gwar y digaeth rhag ein gylanion, ac o afael pawb sydd yn ein casau. Fel hyn y cymerod drigaredd yn ein hynafiaid, a chofio ei gyfamod sanctaidd. Y llw a dangos wrth Abraham ein tad, y rhoddau unigael ein hachub o afael gylanion. A'i addoli yn ddiofn, 
mewn Sanctaidrwydd a Chyfiawnder, ger ei fron ef, holl bydiau ein bywyd. A ddithau fy mlentyn, gelwyr di yn broffoed y goruchaf, oherwydd bydd yn cerdded o flaen yr archlwyd i baratoi ei lwybrau. I roi yw bobl wybodaeth am waredigaeth trwy fyddaiant ei pechodau. Hyn yw tri galed calon ein diw, fe ddaw ar wal ddydd oedd ei uchod un plis. I lewechu ar rai sy'n eistedd yn ywyllwch casgod angau, a chyfeirio ein traed i ffordd tan nefedd. Ddogoniant i'r tad ac i'r mab ac i'r ysbryd blaen, fel yr oedd yn y dechrau, y mae yn awr ac y byd yn wastad. Yn oes oes oes. Amen. Yr ail darlluniad o'r efengel yn ôl St. Matthew, the second reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. This is chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the sea, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, for by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. And then of Tad Armab Arasprigran. Amen. If you had been in a boat out fishing all night in rough conditions and in the early hours before daybreak someone or something approached across the water despite the strong wind and the substantial waves, I suspect you would be terrified. I certainly would be. Had you drunk too much or was it sleep deprivation? It's hardly surprising that though it looked like Jesus, the disciples on the Sea of Galilee thought it was a ghost and cried out in fear, and that even when Jesus sought to reassure them, Peter, usually the first to speak out, was dubious. Arglwydd os tydi yw, gochamin i mi ddod atat ar y tonau. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. On the water. The disciples had been told by Jesus to get into the boat and to go ahead of him to the other side of the sea and lake, and as far as they were concerned, they would be on their own, come what may, come wind, come weather, until they reached that destination. No doubt, given the stormy conditions, they wished that Jesus had come with them to ensure their safety and well-being, but he had not done so. The reading tells us that they were to go on ahead. 
while Jesus dismissed the crowds, the many thousands who had followed him from the towns and who he had just fed from five loaves and two fishes. We might be inclined to think that the disciples had indeed been at the bottle or were suffering hallucinations, perhaps from dehydration or exposure, from a sleepless night of hard toil in the face of battering waves, and therefore they'd imagined the whole episode. But the story is well attested. It appears in two out of three of what we call the Synoptic Gospels, who seem to have shared similar sources, and also in John's Gospel. Why Luke left it out, we do not know. But what was the point of sharing the story if it was based upon a figment of the imagination? We, too, can find ourselves in situations in which God appears absent, wishing that he were with us to guide and protect us, but feeling that we're on our own. Facing down the stormy situations that the world has to throw at us. Sometimes God comes to us through his Holy Spirit when we least expect it. And in some ways, we might prefer in our heart of hearts that he didn't. I've been alone at prayer sometimes, thinking that if Jesus appeared in my room, I would have the fright of my life. But God does come to us, and often in the most unexpected ways, and that can be reassuring, but also unsettling. St Mark's version of this story tells us that Jesus intended to pass them by, and that takes us back to our Old Testament reading, in which Elijah, who had been on the run from Jezebel for killing all the prophets of Baal and was at an all-time low, was told to come out of his cave on Mount Horeb, for the Lord is about to pass by. Elijah presents us with another human scenario that we can understand. Not only did Jezebel want him killed, but his fellow Israelites had abandoned all their faith in God, or so he thought, and he was the only one left. I'm sure many of us will have felt from time to time that church life was declining so much and there were so many hurdles to overcome. For instance, at the moment, as we seek to reopen our churches, that we might as well give up. But into these situations, both of them, the last one of despair and feeling alone and isolated, and the other of simply not having the faith that God can get through to our situation, the Lord steps in, not always as we would like or expect, as the two passages show. But then why should he? God's presence can be most unexpected, walking across water and being mistaken for a ghost, or as a sound of sheer silence, rather than in the majesty and power and noise of wind, earthquake and fire, as in our first reading. And sometimes we only realise his presence with us afterwards, just as when the glory of the Lord appeared to Moses in Exodus 33, and the Lord again passed by, with God telling Moses, Ache wealth and heaven, and you shall see my back. In today's reading, which we haven't heard from the letter to the Romans, St Paul wants to reassure the Roman Christians and us, that God is not far away. Jesus had no problem in covering the distance from where his disciples had left him on the shore as he dismissed the crowds in our Gospel reading. As Paul puts it in his letter, we don't have to ascend to heaven or descend to the abyss to summon him up, just as the prophets of Baal unsuccessfully tried to do with their deity before Elijah killed them all and was then hunted down by Jezebel. Paul's message is that Christ does not have to be brought down here. 
he has come down already in the incarnation, nor does he need to be summoned up from the dead. He has died for us and has been raised from the grave, but he remains with us through his Holy Spirit, as he told his disciples he would. We shall, as humans, flounder, just as Peter started to sink, as he started to follow the example of Jesus in walking on the water. But as Jesus indicated, as he immediately reached out his hand and caught him, Estanot yesie lao arinwais agavailando. If we only have faith, faith in God's willingness and ability to be present with us and to guide and support us through his Holy Spirit, despite the stormy waters and the passing of time, we shall not sink but sail on through the sea of life with our nets full. Amen. Now going to say together Canticle number 15, A Song of the Wilderness. Um, and this is on daily in daily prayer on pages 156 and 157. I'm going to say it in English. The wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. They will see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands, make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not. Your God is coming with judgment coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a heart and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The ransomed of the Lord shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We now join together in saying the Apostles' Creed on pages 30 and 31. And I shall say this in Welsh. Cred ar new, dad hor gyfoesog, creawd o'r nefoedd a daeath, cred ar yn iesu grist, unig fab diw ein harglwydd ni, a genhedloed o'r asbriglan, a aned o fai afforoi, a dioddefodd dan Pontius Pilate, a groeshoedd, a ddifarw, Ac y gladdoedd, disganodd i blith y meilu, a'r ytrydydd dydd fe atgyfododd, esganodd i'r nefoedd, ac y mae'n eistedd a ddihailaw'r tad, ac fe ddaw i fan i'r byw a'r meilu. Cred ar fan yr ysbryglan, yr eglwys lan gatholig, cam un y saint, maddaiant pechodau. At gyfodiad y corff a'r bywyd traigwyddol. Amen. Let us pray. Gan ymfyddiad yn ei arddewidion, gweddion ar y tad, trusting in his promises, let us pray to the Father. For the people of God, that the power of Christ may uphold us in our weakness. We pray especially for Joanna, our Bishop, for Anne, our local ministry area Dean, and all who minister in Arn, LMA, and also for Brotavy LMA, for their Dean, the Reverend John Bennett, 
to the Reverend Chris Frost, the Reverend Peter Radcliffe, the Reverend Alan Kent, the Reverend Anne Beeman, the Reverend Elizabeth Rowe, and all who minister there. We pray in Bangor Diocese for George Williams, due to be ordained deacon next weekend, and any others who are due to be ordained at this time of year, including our own, the Reverend Carol Court. And in the Anglican Communion, we pray for the province, province de l'Église Anglicane au Rwanda and their Archbishop, Laurence Mbanda. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who proclaim the word of truth, that they may be inspired by the wisdom your Spirit gives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Drosarai sin denesi at oleni fiz, arirardoi de doini wir ad nebadiaith o honoi hin. Argloid and adrigared, grando en gwedi. Dros baug sin hafodi, paug sin dysgi, a baug sin quilio ar a am a gwirionedd. Argloid and adrigared, Grando Enguedi. For our families and friends, that the Lord will guide them in his way and give them joy in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are hungry or sick, persecuted, lonely or marginalised, Bear up those who sink beneath the waves of pain and sorrow. And we pray especially for those known to us in any need at this time, and especially amongst the sick and suffering, for Tommy and Rosemary, Jean and Bert, Howell, Philip and Fred, and any others known to us personally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dros bobl Cymru ar dernas hon ar gymanwlad, ar i'r arglwydd eu harwain mewn gwirionedd a chafiawnder. Arglwydd yn dydw i garedd, gwrando ein gweddi. Dros y holl hil dynol, Tawel ar stormis sydd yn tarfi ar y byd, yn enwedig yn Beirut, ac o ganlaniad i'r coronavirus. Troi aer y gwirionedd, dar o weledigaeth newydd o Gris, sydd yn agos at bawb, o nas gwelyr gan lawerwydd. Ar glwydd yn dydrygaredd, Grando en gwedi. For those who have died in the faith of Christ, and for those whose faith is known to God alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We take a moment of silence to offer our own personal prayer this morning. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants, as may be best for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and the world to come, the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together now to say the Lord's Prayer in the language of our choice. Our Father, ein tad, ar hwn oed yn y nefoi, sanctaidia de enw, deled de dernas, gwneled o wellus, negis yn y nef, felly ar y ddau ar heddiw. Dar o e ni heddiw ein barabynyddio, a maddau ni endyledion, fel y myddeo ninnau endyledwyr, 
ac nac arwain ni brofedigaeth, eithio gwared ni rhad drwg. Caniseiddo ti o dernas ar gallu a gogoniant yn oes oes oes. Amen. The collect for today, the ninth Sunday of the Trinity. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your Church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The second collect for peace. O Dio, au dear tang never the harod katinde, a mai dad nabo di and vawid traguito, as wasanaithi and radid perfaith, am thifani rag holch em osodiadai in galanion, vel aninain thoir em viried and anoded. Nad ofnun allu neb on gwrth wynebwyr. Troi iesu gris stein hargrwydd. Amen. And the third collect for grace. Eternal God and Father, by your power we are created and by your love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to you and love and service of one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. Arbendith hothechinog. A tad, a ma barasbriglan, a voen eichlith, a kandrigo gedachwi, an wastad. Amen. We're now going to sing the hymn, Open Our Eyes, Lord, We Want to See Jesus, a gorein llagaid i weled ar yesi. And we'll sing this first of all in Welsh and then in English. Agor ein llagaid i weled y Iesu i mestin ar cyffwrdd a dweud i ni gari Agor ein glistiau a disg i ni rando Agor ein calon i nabod yr Iesu. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him, and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Oh, open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. Before we go, just to remind you of some of our announcements and also that all of our announcements can be found on the St. Clair's, uh, Royal St. Clair LMA Facebook page. But just to draw your attention to one or two, um, Archdeacon Dorian will be broadcasting his service at 10 o'clock this morning and um, we are continuing uh, with our usual pattern this week so that Canon Anne will be giving her Facebook message on Tuesday at 11 o'clock and this coming Friday then please note oh sorry I should mention on Thursday morning will be morning prayer as usual at half past eight then on Thursday and then on Friday morning um, at, at 2 p.m. Reverend Lorna will be hosting a cafe church when we come together for um, a short period with our 
cups of coffee or tea or whatever drink you want to bring or no drink at all uh, just to share in some time together and to reflect on a bit of the a passage from the Bible and to have a, a little prayer together. So do please join us if you wish to on Friday at 2 p.m. If you want to join us on that occasion then you need to have the Zoom link so please contact us via the um, Facebook page. And similarly from the Zoom point of view um, just to tell you uh, remind you that at 12 o'clock today there will be a Zoom Eucharist, um, which uh, uh, will be uh, led by myself support, uh, and also by Reverend Lorna. Um, so if you wish to join in today's Zoom Eucharist at 12, please can you get in contact with, with one of us or with the uh, Facebook page as soon as possible so that we can send you the link for that. And that will be continuing each Sunday and so also next Sunday, we shall also have morning prayer as usual at nine o'clock. I'm really working on trying hard, getting the times right for a change of all these services since I seem to regularly get them wrong. Nine o'clock next Sunday morning, led by Reverend Lorna. And I believe those are all the notices uh, that I want to give out. In case you don't join us later today, um, Please um, hold in your hearts um, Father Chris and his wife Anne as they make their move down to Penna um, in the next few days. And so, Elch and Hang Nevis Christ, Gioch Avoidu, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this morning.